Hey guys, another political one today. Um, somebody asked me about Filipino pride. Now the first thing I want to say about pride is it's not just Philippines. It's, it's in many countries, many cultures, and it's often a manipulation um, in the sense of it's a false sense of nationalism or a push towards your, it's showing signs of nationalism by getting everybody to conform to a certain way. Um, I always put a big question mark on it because quite simply when it becomes driven to a point where it's just done there through a draconian environment without any questions to why XYZ then it's not good um, because you can't really fundamentally um, say it's right or wrong because you're not allowed. <laughs> you're not allowed. Uh, what do I mean? Like, Flag ceremonies. A lot of times it's not relevant to a lot of people. Now, a lot of people say, well, that's not patriotic enough, it's not nationalistic enough. Um, I would say that the whole point of that being driven in a certain way is often from people's backgrounds, which is historical, which was driven into your parents, your grandparents, or whatever. But it doesn't mean that somebody is any less patriotic or nationalistic just because they don't want to go to a flag ceremony. Um, I know myself, I have no interest in it. Um, the big thing for me, and I'll tell you my reasoning behind it, is the hypocrisy of it. The hypocrisy of the people leading these things are often running, like the UK, running into the ground. Um, even stuff relating to Syria right now. There is conflicts of information coming out of there, and I think if you ask me what my opinion is with Syria, I'd say the fuel pipeline between Syria, Iran, and Iraq, because that will bypass the Russian pipeline, which would mean that the UK and other parts of Europe would be able to bypass the, the gas and oil they rely on from Russia. But that's my personal opinion. But maybe I'm not nationalistic enough. Maybe I have a, my pride is in the wrong place. Now, back to Filipino pride. The reason I brought that up is because there's two things going on here. There's like a personal pride, um, which is not Filipino. It's a personal thing rather than a nationalistic sense of pride and ownership. Because uh, like a Manny Pacquiao fight, the whole country stops to watch it. No issue with that whatsoever. It's, it's actually supporting your nation, it's supporting your country, it's supporting the people that are doing something for the nation in the sense of highlighting the country globally. Um, and then obviously, if you win, you, you also recognize as a world champion. But at the same time, there will be things where, for example, you catch somebody stealing and they lose face over it because you made it very public and that is the false sense of pride. They blame you for catching them. You're rich enough to be stolen from. You're rich enough to afford them taking stuff on a regular basis. And that is the false sense of pride. That is not pride. That is a five-year-old mentality of being caught stealing out of the fridge, stealing the sweets from the cookie, uh, cookie jar or whatever. It's, it's that sense of pride you have to be very careful of. That's, sometimes that can be the dangerous one. I mean, that's where somebody slaps you over the head with a bolo or something. Um, because people don't like being confronted with their own demons, that they're, they're a thief or uh, maybe ridiculed in front of other people. But generally, I don't recommend doing that anyway. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't uh, go out ridiculing anybody. I, I, it's, well, I don't try to anyway. I don't go out of my way and sort of say, well, look at that guy, he just fell over and burst out laughing. You, you may mention it to somebody afterwards, but you, you try, try not to make a scene of it. Or you stick on YouTube. No, um, but the, the point being is the false sense of pride is not pride. It's, it's, um, it's trying to create an image that's not there. Now, at the same time, when you do get some of it where they are competitively comparing things, like we are the best of this or we are the best of that, um, lots of people do it, lots of nations do it. 
Um, it's why I can't watch things like a lot of the US cookery shows, because it seems like they only focus on the US, but they may say, the world's greatest this, and yet never leave the States. Um, that sort of stuff, just sort of, it, it just sort of, A, it's not going to be the best, but B, how can you even do a comparison? It's more often the biggest, and not like else, or the hottest, or something like that. It's not the best. The best is a completely different dynamic. Um, but that sort of false pride is driven that we are the best at this, we are the best at that, we got this. And, this. and is it worth changing? Probably not. The, the, the people that are doing this stuff are not really intentionally trying to hurt anybody or uh, go against anything and often it's built on the knowledge they're given. Uh, this is what I was saying about the TV shows, because I've seen that the US stuff is often very locked in. Um, I mean, the UK, you look at the BBC, that's, that's a prime example. You've got the BBC News, what a shower of garbage that is. Uh, but the, the point is, a lot of it is locked in. It's locked into a very specific dynamic. They follow this, this is true because we're told it's true. It's not thinking out the box. It's not looking beyond what's in front of them. But it may also be driven that it's the best. And confronting that by actually saying it's wrong is a bit like the Japanese saying relating to the, the tallest nail being hammered. Um, that happens. And you'll see that in political things, political rallies and stuff, where people will get shouted down for not agreeing with people that are political in the sense that they're on the stage and say something and then um, they don't like it. So they will focus on that person to shout them down. And it often is just shouting down and ridiculing because what that person says goes, that's it. They're not interested in whether it's a debate or not. They want to shut it down. Um, <clears throat> at least they get some heckling. I, I think you'd struggle to find a lot of places to heckle in the UK. Um, but at least they still have some ability to go in there, even if it's shot down in flames, um, often through just shouting them down rather than a debate. But my personal view on it, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's not your problem. And I, I think that's the big thing on a lot of this stuff is you're not going to change it. It's not something that really matters. If people are going to believe that stuff, I would say you've got more things to worry about with what Facebook's been storing on people. I think there's more to worry about on what lots of other media things have been storing and the stuff in the background and how everything's politically connected and manipulated. That's more concerning. False sense of pride in the Philippines? Nah, don't worry about it at all. Don't even get into the debates why things are bigger or better elsewhere because unless they've got something to compare it against, they ain't going to change their mind. I've already had many a conversation relating to, uh, I mean, the Sugbo Museum was a prime example. Where I was talking to the narrator about the versions he'd been told and then told him what really happened and things like that. And then he's starting to get to the point where he's going to show me something. He'll say, well, what do you think? Because <laughs> he wants to know my response rather than give me his for me to actually explain from somebody who's actually been outside the Philippines. But anyway, thanks for watching.